Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at a logarithmic equation. This problem was taken from a book called A Problem Book in Algebra by Kretschmar. I'll share the link down below. So we have 2 times the log of x plus 3 equals log of ax and we know that or we're told that this equation has only one root. And we're going to be looking for the a values. All right, so this is a pretty interesting problem because a is a parameter. We don't know what it is. That's what we're going to find. All right, so this is the first thing we're going to do. Notice that x plus 3 needs to be greater than 0 in order for this log function to be defined. By the way, when I say log, you should always understand it's base 10. Otherwise, if it's base e, I'm going to be writing ln. Okay, so I'll make sure we're not confused about that. So the first thing I, I'm going to do is use the exponent rule. So I'm going to write this as log x plus 3 squared. And that's equal to log of ax. If you want, you can write the x in parentheses. No big deal. I think it's understood. So now what we're going to do here is obviously we can get rid of the logs for now and to turn it into an equation. Since they have the same base, we can write a write it as x plus 3 quantity squared equals ax. If you expand it, x squared plus 6, x plus 9, and then let's go ahead and arrange everything, and we should be getting something like, I'll probably write it like this, because when we write the quadratic formula, we have a negative b, so it's always good to have a negative sign in front of the b. Okay, and then this should be plus 9 equals 0. So this is our quadratic equation, or the important question is, is it quadratic, right? Because we, we do need one root from this, solu uh, from this equation. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, there are different cases. We're going to be looking at different cases here. The first case is basically we want one root. So we want a discriminant, which I'm going to call delta, the Greek letter. Some people write it as a capital D. It doesn't really matter. But delta is the discriminant of the quadratic. And I want delta to equal 0, which means the solutions are equal. So let's go ahead and calculate the delta here. Delta is going to equal b squared. That's going to be a minus 6 squared minus 4 times 9. And you want it to be 0. If you expand this, a squared minus 12a plus 36 minus 36 is going to equal 0. And these two are going to cancel out. And we're going to, we end up with this equation. A times the quantity A minus 12 is equal to 0. From here, we get two values. A is either 0 or 12. Now, obviously, A, equal, A equals 0 is not acceptable. Because if you look at the original problem, A equals 0 is going to turn this expression into 0, which is going to make it undefined. So we're going to discard A equals 0 and go with A equals 12. Which means that this equation, in fact, has only one root if a is equal to 12. But is that the only thing? No. Of course, there's another case that we're going to talk about. And here's the second case. Now, in the second case scenario, our equation, which is quadratic, right, has two solutions. But one of them is not going to work. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, sometimes when you're solving rational equations, logarithmic equations, you know, trigonometric equations, especially when you square both sides and you do those kinds of manipulations, some solutions are introduced that are not actual solutions. They're called extraneous solutions. So this is what we want. We want delta, the discriminant, to be positive so that we can get two solutions. But one of the roots, one of the roots, is extraneous, which means it satisfies the equation that you manipulated, the new version, but it doesn't work in the original one. OK, so how do we achieve that? Let's go ahead and solve this equation with two solutions where delta is greater than 0. And let's see what we can do. So what are the roots of this quadratic? Now, what is the quadratic? Let's go ahead and write down our quadratic one more time and see how we can write the solution. So our quadratic was, if you remember, I wrote the b as a negative term like this, and then like that. OK, now 
let's go ahead and write down the quadratic formula so we can get the solutions. x equals negative b, which is a minus 6, plus minus the square root of b squared. So I'm going to square a minus 6 minus 4ac. Or you already remember that we found the discriminant, right? So we can just go ahead and write it down here. And remember, the discriminant was equal to a squared minus 12a. So we can basically say that this is this is our discriminant. So it's going to be square rooted, obviously. So these are going to be the solutions all over 2a, which is 2. So now these are the solutions, and we can go ahead and separate them because here we need to distinguish between the two roots because we want one of them to work and the other one not to work in the original problem. So let's go ahead and write it as x1 equals a minus 6 plus the square root of a squared minus 12a over 2, and x2 equals a minus 6 minus the square root of a squared minus 12a all over 2. So I kind of distinguish between the roots. x1 is the positive one, the sign, sign-wise, and the x2 is the one that has a negative sign. Okay? Now, what do you want from x1 and x2? Well, you want one of the solutions to work, but the other not to work. So in this case, this is what, what it's supposed to mean. This is a quadratic equation, and if you look at these equations, we know that this delta is positive because we already covered the case where delta is zero, and if delta is less than zero, obviously you're not gonna get any real solutions, so that's not gonna be handled. So we have this case only, and in this case, since we want one of the equations to fail while delta is positive, it means that you're going to have two different solutions, but how, how one of them is not going to work, if you look at the original problem, if you can get a solution that is less than negative 3, for example, something like a negative 4, for example, then this is going to be undefined. So you basically want the following. You want one of the solutions to be, let's say, x1, okay? You want x1 to be greater than negative 3, and you want x2 to be less than or equal to negative 3, so that it's not going to satisfy the original problem. Now, the reason why it satisfies this equation is because, if you remember, we kind of use the power rule and write it as x plus 3 quantity squared here, which turns the negative quantity into a positive quantity. So those two equations obviously don't have the same set of solutions or don't have the same domain. So this is one of the cases, or it could be that x1, instead of x1, maybe we can write it as... We can write it as x2 is greater than negative 3, and x1 is less than or equal to negative 3, because both cases can probably occur, right? At least we have to check. So let's go ahead and replace x1 and x2 with what it is and see what happens. So the first one gives me, so let's call this first inequality system, and let's call this second system. First system, second system. Okay. In the first system, I have a minus 6 plus the square root of a squared minus 12a over... 2, I want this to be greater than negative 3, and I want the other solution, which is the minus 1, to be less than or equal to negative 3. Now again, this is a system which I need to simplify. Let's go ahead and simplify this, and we're going to go back to system number 2, and we'll do the same thing. All right, so let's just work on this one at a time. So, if you simplify this, obviously you can cross multiply by 2, and then, you know, uh, add 6 to both sides, so on and so forth, and this is what you're going to be getting. You're going to get something like the square root of a squared minus 12a is greater than negative a, and a squared minus 12a, the square root of that, is greater than or equal to a. So now our system is a little simpler, but we still need to simplify this a little bit more. And if I square both sides, in both cases, in both cases, we're going to be getting the following. a squared minus 12a is going to be greater than a squared. Of course, when I take a look at the intersection, I can't use the equality. a squared cancels out. We get uh, negative 12a is greater than 0, which means a is less than 0. So this means that for a is less than 0, my equation is only going to have one solution. So this is one of the solutions for a. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second system, which we have right here, and see what happens from there. We're going to have something similar, slightly different, but the result is going to be more interesting for this one. So we have the following then a minus 6 minus the square root of a squared minus 12a. Remember, this is x2. You want this to be greater than negative 3, and you want x1, which is the positive one, 
to be less than or equal to negative zero. So this is the equation. This is the solution that's not going to work. And from here, when we simplify, we're going to get something similar, very similar. But like I said earlier, this is more interesting. And you'll see in a little bit why. All right. So this first one is going to give me less than a. The second one is going to give me less than or equal to negative a. Now, this is interesting because if you think about this, the radical expression on the left hand side is non-negative. And if it's less than a or negative a, well, either a is positive, right? Either a is positive or negative. Well, if a is positive, then negative a is negative, which means that either a is negative or negative a is negative, which means that our radical must be less than a negative quantity, which is impossible. So from here, we do get no solutions. Okay, from the second system, we don't get any solutions, but don't worry because it doesn't matter. We already got some solutions and we're just going to just wrap it up with those. So what is the final verdict? Let's go ahead and write it down and finalize this problem. So our solution is going to be done. Remember, we were looking for the A values for which this equation has only one root. And our equation was 2 times log x plus 3 is equal to log of ax. Again, I didn't write ax in parentheses, but if you're really worried about that, here we go. I'm going to write it in parentheses. I know some people can be very picky about these things, but I'm kind of loose on that one. So here's the solution. This equation has, this equation has only one solution if, if, a is equal to 12. Remember, that was the first value that we found by setting the discriminant equal to 0. Or if A is less than 0. Because whenever A is negative, we're not going to get the other solution. Therefore, this is going to be the solution for A. And we were looking for the A values. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.